In the times of COVID-19 pandemic, the academic calendar has gone for a complete toss. The schools, the colleges, the universities, various professional colleges are all shut at least till the 31st of August. Various entrance examinations have either been cancelled or postponed. Among them, of course, is the prestigious JE, which is scheduled for the month of September 2020 right now, both mains as well as advanced. And also, how the entire curriculum, the academic calendar has also got affected. Uh, with me to discuss this is Professor B.S. Murthy, Director of IIT Hyderabad. Professor Murthy, a privilege to have you on this broadcast and thank you very much for your time. My first thank question, you. Given the atmosphere of worry and anxiety uh, over contracting a corona COVID-19 infection, several students and parents are now demanding that the exams which are scheduled for the month of September, first the JE mains in the first week and then the JE advanced towards the later half of September should be further postponed uh, because the situation is not deemed to be safe enough for them to travel to various examination centers and take this examination. What is your position on this? Let's start with the JE mains first because that's of course spread over five to six days. What's your take on it? First and foremost, this is not a decision to be taken by one IIT director <clears throat> that you should know. Okay, it's a decision that uh, the whole community together as uh, IITs have to take and also look at not only the <clears throat> aspect of uh, 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 whether the students will be able to travel or not. So uh, if that is the main issue, can we generate more centers in places which are nearer to the students, where the students are living, so that we will be still able to conduct it. See, there are um, two aspects to this. One is postponing is, an, in, in, in my view, an easy decision. Uh, though it has its own implications. Of course, I would say the major implications is the students have been waiting for quite some time. Okay, They prepare themselves almost for about three years uh, uh, and if not more in some places, uh, they start much earlier uh, for preparing to JE. JE is almost like a, their dream. Uh, entering into an IIT is their dream and uh, so there is a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, already uh, pressure in them that an exam which was supposed to have uh, happened in the month of May or June is now happening in September. So almost three months uh, more of uh, anxiety in them. So should we continue this anxiety further uh, is is a point that and they are all just 17 year old kids please understand okay they are not really a matured kids uh, to take up this pressure of your age or my age uh, so this is a very important point to note and um, then the second question is uh, can we really conduct it uh, in such a way that everybody's needs are reasonably taken care okay one main problem is traveling okay with the travel restrictions that are there so one of the better ways is to see if we can have more number of centers where this can be conducted so the whole IIT you know community uh, uh, as the directors we had a meeting and then there was a small subcommittee form which is discussing this in greater detail and they will come up and uh, tell what are the way, measures by which we may be able to uh, conduct it. If they find out that it is very difficult to conduct it, okay, in spite of all the measures that you take, possibly it will be postponed. That's the decision that we want to take it at the end rather than at the beginning. Okay, so okay. because you know, no IITN should give up. Okay, that's the first right. characteristic that we teach to an IITN. Okay, Absolutely. so so giving up is weak-minded job. Uh, uh, so it's it's important to fight it out and see if there is a way to find solution. For mm -hmm. every problem, there can be a solution. Right. Uh, let, let me just take you and give the example of the Karnataka Common Entrance Test. They conducted it on July 30 and 31, even though the Karnataka government was quite happy with the manner in which they conducted. There were at least the visual suggested that social distancing went for a toss. Uh, the entire standard operating procedures were not complied with. The Karnataka government's argument was that what's the guarantee that the situation will be better in September or October in case if they are postponed? Do you think that the IIT ecosystem also is kind of thinking of the same kind of an argument? No, 
research. No, no, no. The point is, if we take up, I mean, IIT, you have been seeing that IIT, anything that IIT has been doing, they do it with a very, very meticulous planning. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why this is one of the most confidential operation that is conducted in the whole country, I would say. Okay. So, so as a result, uh, you know, we, if at all it is conducted, it will be conducted with all the necessary precautions. Okay, mm. including if necessary a PPE kit being given to a student. Uh, mm. So to that extent, you know, people are discussing. Every minute detail will be discussed in the mm. in the subcommittee, and they will come up with ways provided they decide to conduct it. And all, uh, I mean, we are even talking about how to separate the students sitting in two terminals. Okay, mm. uh, can there be a way to separate them? Uh, so, is it possible through a PPE kit or is it possible through some kind of a partitioning? So, there are so many details, very, very minute details that people are discussing and there will be uh, definitely, uh, my, my feeling is if we conduct it, it will be conducted very meticulously. Okay. I do not want to comment on anything else uh, which yeah. somebody else has conducted, but if IIT is conducted, it will be done with a proper planning. Okay, I'm sure all the students who are kind of gearing up and waiting for the JE will be reassured listening to you right now. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Because their health is the most important for us. Okay. Yes. I mean, education, everything comes after the, your health is taken care. So that is very important. And we are also parents. It, they are like our kids. So as a result, as much responsibility a parent takes, uh, the same responsibility all of us as directors of IITs we take. Absolutely. Now that's as far as the IIT, I mean the JE mains is concerned, which is at least spread over five to six sessions. The JE advance, which is scheduled for the end of September, will be a single day session. Does that pose a slightly different kind of challenge? So that there also we are discussing, can we make it two days? Okay. Uh, can we make it two sessions on the same day? So there are, because uh, we have to see how many uh, centers are possible. Uh, mm. with uh, whatever requirements that are needed for conducting a JE advance so that we are first looking at is there a possibility of increasing the number of centers okay there was a lot of discussion on this happened when all IIT directors met uh, and that uh, obviously because TC um, is conducting this okay uh, so we are uh, trying to talk to them to see if there is a possibility of increasing the number of centers or if you can increase the number of centers and handle them carefully then in one day it can be still done okay so that the students need not have to travel long distance and in every major town or city uh, if you can have a, a node there or a kind of a center there identified with all the necessary precautions if not okay. we will think of possibly uh, you know making it in two parts let's say same day maybe two parts or maybe two days so uh, that is also being discussed but still uh, the decision is set to come possibly by the middle of this month or so we will have a clarity on that okay my final decision before i move on to the next part of my interview my final question is in case if it is postponed from september maybe to october november what kind of an impact do you see it having on your academic calendar we do not want to postpone first of all okay <laughs> that's uh, so 99 percent uh, we will not like to postpone it because we feel that already we have postponed this has never happened in the history of je uh, and so as a result so even if uh, with this uh, with this particular i would say september also the sessions can only start maybe in november okay or possibly first of december or middle of november something like that okay so so we are already gearing up for that you know that means basically almost one semester we are going to lose uh, yes. so we have started thinking about can we uh, complete uh, the whole four year course in three and a half years for example for example oh. every semester the student takes at iit hyderabad if i can say which is reasonably true with other iits also typically about 16 credits a semester the student takes okay so uh, that uh, into uh, eight will give you about 120 125 credits at iit uh, hyderabad so if we can divide uh, that 16 credits of one semester by eight you will get two credits so if each semester the student takes two extra credits he may be able to complete everything 
by uh, seven semesters itself okay with just two additional credits that means one part one course additional course possibly okay right. so so right. that if it can be done uh, this is one one possibility another possibility is to conduct some summer terms okay yes. so reduce the summer vacation for one or two years if necessary so that we also teach during that summer and ensure uh, that uh, they will be able to complete but still okay. summer we don't want to really uh, put it because most of the faculty keep waiting for the summer for doing a lot of research most of the phd students wait for the summer to come because that is the time where the teachers the faculty do not have much of a teaching assignment so they focus a lot on research and iits are not simply teaching institutions okay absolutely they, the uh, research is given as equal importance in fact if you look at uh, iit hyderabad itself the number of masters and phd students is mm -hmm. more than the number of vtechs that we have okay, okay? we are three, almost 3000 students we have out of the 3000 students only about 1300 students or 1400 students are vtechs so okay. the remaining 1600 are all masters and phd so that and is the level of importance that we give to that so, and, and so we, we are looking at various course. models by which they will still complete it without uh, you know having to uh, spend one extra semester right okay okay now now let's look at the impact of covid-19 on the entire learning process at iit hyderabad in specific what are the changes that you have you have introduced and how would the new normal as the phrase is now known be at iit hyderabad yeah so see if, to be honest with you when this came it came as as a kind of a, uh, out of the blue okay Absolutely. nobody was originally prepared for it okay yes. so and also luckily iit hyderabad has a an advantage here when compared to some of the older iits is that we have what is called a fractal system okay in a fractal system typically in a in any uh, older iit if you have to do for some 15 credits okay they are all done as five courses of three credits each typically okay and whereas in iit hyderabad the students can do 15 courses of one credit each Okay. So we have a large number of one credit courses, two credit courses, uh, and also some three credit courses. So the students, uh, uh, the whole semester for us is broken into three segments. I mean, three parts. We call it as one, two segment, three, four segment, and five, six segment. And you can even take a half a credit course also at IIT Hyderabad. Half, okay. one, 1.5, two, 2.5, that is how we have six segments we identify. So what has happened is by the time May middle this has happened, our one two segment was already over. Students have done a number of courses already. Three four segment also was almost at the end of it. Okay, so the only the five six segment was kind of affected. So what we did was wherever possible, you know, we also knew that quite a number of students have suddenly gone home. Uh, some of them possibly even the, leaving their laptops possibly in their rooms. Okay, uh, because they thought that after a week or so they will come back or after two weeks because this all happened during uh, holy time. So, so yes. we knew that students may not have the access to, uh, you know, computation very much and also may not have the access to, you know, high, uh, you know, speed network. You know, in, in India, a number of villages still have, do not have a very high speed network. Okay. So what I, I advise to all our faculty, which they all cooper, cooperated with, is to see if we can send them notes, a small, small, uh, one MB file, half an MB file, that kind of thing, notes, PPTs to the students, rather than giving a one hour video lecture, which, which will cost a lot in terms of uh, listening. Many a times, for example, uh, unless you switch off the video, uh, you will not be able to get connected in these online meetings. I've been seeing that. Uh, so video really demands a lot of uh, uh, bandwidth, whereas audio yeah. does not. So we yeah. asked our teachers to give audio lectures after okay. sending the class notes. So 15 right. minute audio lecture, convert right. uh, one hour of lectures into four segments or so and give yeah. audio lectures. And wherever yeah. possible, if the student is uh, sending a mail saying that, no, I am not able to, we even interacted with them on WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. So variety of methods, methodologies, because one good thing about IITs is IITs completely give autonomy to the faculty to deal with any situation because he teaches, he sets the question paper, he evaluates it. So, so there is a lot of autonomy to teacher. So we right. utilize this autonomy to teachers that is available to an extent to say that your goal is to reach out to every single student of the class. How you right. reach, we leave it to you.
Okay. okay. You find right. out uh, the requirements of the students and ensure that you reach to everybody so that nobody right. complains to me. And the number but, of complaints that we have is very few uh, at the end. Okay. My final question, Professor Murthy. So you have kind of highlighted the kind of flexibility that you're uh, adopting as far as the teaching process, teaching approach is concerned. In terms of at a very mental kind of a level, what kind of new sensibilities would you want your faculty as well as the students to embrace once a situation kind of gets back to normal or is in the path of getting back to normal? Sure. So first and foremost is I should, I mean, in addition to saying that we are trying to adopt to this, I should also say that engineering education cannot be, uh, be done on an online mode. Okay. Uh, because engineering education is a, there is a lot of hands-on learning okay yes. this hands-on learning is in the labs okay starting from the workshop and things like that a, a lot of hands-on learning goes in in the four years of uh, learning and so those things it is almost next to impossible to teach in an online mode though we are attempting to develop modules to uh, do th uh, through visual modes and things like that but still it is not like you know teaching somebody surgery uh, uh, you cannot teach online uh, how to do a surgery. One has to do it, then only he will know. So it's like that. Uh, so that is something that we will have to only do when the students come back. So so any uh, lab courses that we have during the semester, we are um, postponing them till they come back. So that so those particular small credits, we will keep them when they come back and do it. So this is one aspect. The second is we are trying to slowly bring students in batches. You know, first and foremost is we have seen that in addition to the teaching, what has got significantly affected in this COVID situation is the research. Okay, all of our PhD students, we have about 900 PhD students uh, at IIT Hyderabad. All of them have been sent back by 20th of March and almost four months now, they have not done any experimental research. So those who are doing modeling or uh, simulation, they are able to sit at home and possibly do, but at least 50% of the students do experimental research. So this 10th of this month, we are bringing the first batch of students. Hmm? Okay. So we have asked all the teachers, faculty, which of those 900 students who are doing experimental research, whom you think should come back to campus to be able to do their research. Uh, so they have given us a list of about 250. We contacted these 250 and uh, particularly focused on the final year students because for them only two, three months of experimentation may be sufficient to submit a thesis and that is getting affected significantly. Uh, so as a result, we asked all of them and out of them about 70 or 80 people said we would like to come quickly. So, so we have now prepared everything. Uh, we have brought the mess workers, quarantined them for two weeks. Uh, they are all there on the campus now. By the time students come, they are going to be quarantined and food is going to be prepared. And we are going to quarantine these students for about uh, 14 days, two weeks. And then after that, allow them to go to the labs. So this is, and we want to do it batch by batch. Every uh, three weeks, one more batch comes in so that we slowly get used to this way of uh, handling it in small, small batches so that we know that we get a confidence that we can handle the situation. Uh, and then by the end of the year, more or less by December or so, we expect definitely situation would be better. By the time the so-called, what I would say, uh, students who are into, uh, you know, uh, what I would say, at the levels of only, um, you know, teaching, I mean, uh, who are curricular students, mostly who, who are in the second year B.Tech, third year B.Tech, that kind of, or fourth year B.Tech, they are the students who will come who need not possibly have an experimental uh, facility immediately, uh, but they can be taught on online. So they will be taught on online by the time situation improves, we'll bring all of them. Okay. Right. Uh, these are definitely challenging times and I'm really uh, glad to hear you talk about in detail about what are the different changes that you are incorporating in order to make educational learning a very enriching and fruitful experience. Thank you very much for your time. As I said, our privilege to have you on our broadcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.